I, a 21-year-old female, have three uncles. For the sake of this post, I'll call them Jim, Richard, and Rob. Rob is the uncle I'm having issues with. But before I get into the details, you need some background information. Growing up, I spent almost all of my time with my uncles and their wives, especially Rob and Aunt Kathy. Aunt Kathy and I were inseparable and spent almost every moment I was at their house together. She always referred to me as her daughter niece. When I turned 15, Aunt Kathy blindsided the entire family by divorcing Rob. I asked her a million times why, but she always told me she'd tell me when I was older, saying that I was still too young. However, she promised to never stop seeing me, and we still go out almost every single Saturday. So I started pestering my parents about why. My mother told me the same thing as Aunt Kathy, but my father pulled me aside and told me the truth. Apparently, Rob had a mistress named Becky, and Aunt Kathy found out. When Dad told me that, I cried and ended up crying myself to sleep that night. When I saw Rob after Dad told me the truth, I confronted him. He seemed more shocked than ashamed of his actions. He claimed that once his divorce was finalized with Aunt Kathy, he was going to marry Becky. He had the nerve to say, don't think of it as losing an aunt, but gaining a better one. I told him that if that was his plan, then I would stop seeing him, and I would certainly never call his mistress my aunt. I stuck to my word. I stopped going over to his house, stopped talking to him, didn't go to his wedding with Becky, and stopped calling him Uncle Rob. He and Becky got married when I was 17, and I've only seen her a handful of times. She is terrible. She's loud, obnoxious, and feels the need to insert herself into every single conversation, even if it has nothing to do with her. It's like she's a real Karen with the haircut to boot. Rob's birthday was last week, which I was planning on missing, but my mom forced me to go with them. When we got there, I said hello to Rob and went to sit down with my cousins. My cousin, Shane, who is 13 years old, showed me his new Nintendo Switch game, and we spent the first hour at Rob's party playing the game. Then Becky said she had something to say to all of us, which got our attention. She announced that she was pregnant. We were not expecting that news, and most of the family started to congratulate her and Rob. I rolled my eyes and turned back to Shane when my mother called me over to her, Becky, and Rob. Mom asked me to congratulate Becky on her pregnancy, which I refused. I turned to walk away, but Becky grabbed my arm tightly and hissed, You should be nice to your aunts and uncles. It's the polite thing to do. I shoved her away and screamed at her that she has no right telling me what I should and shouldn't do, especially since she wasn't my aunt. All she would ever be to me is a stupid mistress who made my real aunt leave. Becky started bawling and ran out of the house. Mom and Rob started scolding me, but I left and walked home. Rob keeps blowing up my phone asking me to apologize to Becky because she's making his home life miserable. Mom is giving me the silent treatment. My dad finds the entire thing amusing, and he reassures me that I did nothing wrong, and that Becky and Rob made their bed, and now they must lie in it. I don't feel bad, but when I told some of my friends, they told me I was a jerk and I should apologize. Am I the a-hole? Edit to add, my father and Rob are brothers. Rob is not my mother's brother. Mini update. I spoke with my father and showed him the bruise that Becky had left on me. He was not happy and excused himself to go for a drive before we continued the conversation. When he came back, he told me that he wasn't going to tell me today, but he had invited Rob and Becky over for a family dinner this upcoming Friday so that we can discuss what happened. He was going to ask what exactly happened. He was in the backyard playing, supervising the younger kids when this all went down, and why Rob was expecting me to apologize when I hadn't done anything wrong. He said that he still plans on having them over, but there was going to be a change of plan. When I asked him what, he told me that I'd see on Friday. I'll make an official update post on my profile, so if anyone is interested in what happens, please keep an eye out. Additional edit, fixing spelling errors. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot, wow. If anyone is an AH here, it's Rob and your mom. Why is your own mom standing up for some homewrecker instead of being on your side? Rob, for sure, had some nerve saying Becky would be the better aunt. Have you spoken with Kathy about what happened? Maybe she'd have some advice to give you about this situation. Comment 2. I don't want to suggest anything, but I find it a bit suspicious that your mom is trying so hard to incorporate and defend the mistress, especially as she almost seems to be condoning the affair, 
And this is just speculation, but could your mom currently or have in the past had an affair? Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, the family dinner happened, and let me tell you, it was a scene straight out of a soap opera. Dad had this whole thing planned out like a chess master. He sat everyone down and started off calm, asking Rob and Becky to explain their side of the story. Becky went on this long rant about how I was disrespectful and how I should be more supportive of their family. Rob just nodded along like one of those bobblehead dolls. But then, Dad pulled out his trump card. He had a recording from the security camera in their backyard that showed the whole incident at the birthday party. Becky grabbing me, me pushing her away, everything. The room went silent. Becky's face turned as red as a tomato, and Rob just sat there, mouth open like he was trying to catch flies. Dad turned to me and asked if I wanted to press charges for the bruise Becky left on my arm. I was shocked. I hadn't even thought about that. But looking at Becky's smug face turned to panic. I felt this wave of, I don't know, satisfaction. I told Dad I'd think about it. The next day, things got even crazier. Jim and Richard, my other uncles, showed up at our house unannounced. They'd heard about the dinner and wanted to talk. Turns out they had their own beef with Rob and Becky. Jim's daughter had been bullied by Becky at a family event a while back, and Richard was mad because Rob had borrowed a significant sum of money and hadn't paid it back. We all sat in the living room, hashing out our issues with Rob and Becky. It was like opening Pandora's box. Everyone had something they were holding on to. By the end of it, we decided as a group that we were done with Rob and Becky's drama. We agreed to support each other and keep our distance from them. But wait, there's more. The next day, Aunt Kathy called me. She'd heard about the dinner and wanted to meet up. We went out for coffee, and she finally told me the real reason she left Rob. It wasn't just the affair. Rob had been gambling away their savings, and Becky was part of that world. Kathy had been keeping this secret to protect the family's image, but she was tired of the lies. After hearing all this, I felt like I was in the right for standing up to Becky. I didn't want an apology from her anymore. I wanted her and Rob to realize the hurt they'd caused our family. I wanted them to take responsibility for their actions. So that's where we're at now. It's been pretty up and down, but I feel like we're finally getting somewhere. Thanks for reading and I'll keep you posted if anything else happens. My sister sided with her bullying Navy SEAL husband when he roughhoused me, but when his affair came to light, I stood by her side while she kicked him out and took everything. I am 22-year-old female. My sister is 30 and her husband is 37. At the moment, I attend university and still live with my mother. My sister lives about an hour away and I visit her once a month. We're close and always had a good relationship, which is why I visit her regularly. My sister's husband, my brother-in-law, is a retired Navy SEAL and intimidating looking, but he's known as a big softy at heart. He likes to make people laugh and pull little pranks, and on the surface, he's extremely warm and friendly. I mean, he does tons of volunteering with vulnerable people too, so it's not like he has a questionable or negative image, at least outwardly. I always liked him, as did my mother. We're both gym enthusiasts, so that's something we talked about frequently. Basically, everyone adores him. By the way, my father passed away when I was little. However, lately he started doing something I hate. He's trained in MMA and a whole bunch of other stuff and thinks it's a good idea to test me. So he will randomly tackle and play wrestle me to teach me. He does it jokingly, and it's something I dislike, but he tells me I'm too uptight and serious. Anytime I spoke up, my sister especially told me I'm being dramatic and overreacting and to just take it. However, it is impossible and unfun because he's literally 6'3 inches of pure muscle. I'm 5'3 inches and fit, but I cannot fairly wrestle someone so much bigger than me, let alone a man. I will be doing something, and he just walks up to me and puts me on his shoulder or whatever. It's so annoying. A few days ago, I was in my sister's kitchen making myself a smoothie. He walked in and picked me up out of nowhere, causing me to spill some fruit juice on my dress, and pinned me down. I was so mad I kept telling him to get off me, but he laughed and wouldn't listen. I kicked him hard a few times, but I could barely move. He was literally taunting me even when I told him that he's too heavy and to get off me. At one point, I threatened to call the police and his eyes literally went dark and he told me to relax. Fortunately, he let go of me and told me that I'm no fun and whatever. I was a bit shaken up and started crying a bit. 
and called my sister. She was at the local grocery store. I told her what he did and she completely, and I mean completely, took his side, saying that her husband would never seriously hurt someone and that I should be used to his playful nature by now. She called me an attention seeker and accused me of trying to tarnish his image. I told her that I will not visit her if she doesn't tell him to leave me alone. We ended up having a screaming match, and I honestly don't see what I did wrong. I decided to completely stop spending any time with him because at this point, it just feels like he's bullying me. I cannot stand being around either of them. Am I the idiot? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I'm 38 years old. I am six feet, three inches tall. I have taught martial arts for years, and for some reason, I have no issues respecting people and their personal space. There is no excuse for what he is doing. It is attack. He is a piece of crap, and you should call the police the next time he does it. He knows exactly what he is doing, and he is going to continue taking liberties, feeling you up, being a creep, because nobody is standing up to him. Oh, and make no mistake, it is creepy. He's not testing you or teaching you, he's gross. Edit. Be careful replying to Molester Stallone 73 and Pranav VK. They are trolls that will harass you nonstop. Both of them like joking about how women deserve it and touching kids. Truly gross, disgusting people, but I mean, it's Reddit, so it's not unexpected that their ilk is here. Comment 2. I've known a few of these softies. They are big, friendly, helpful, and joking with everyone. Unless you dare to do this one unforgivable thing, disagree with what they're doing, and not apologize for disagreeing by telling them that, yeah, it wasn't a big deal, then they turn dangerous. Your threat to call the police not only amounted to not agreeing with him, it was actually dangerous. Do not ever go anywhere where you might find yourself alone with this guy and absolutely file a police report. Because in his eyes, you are the one being hurtful, and he will feel completely justified to put you in your place. Do not confront him. Do not go to family meetings where he will be. Be safe. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around. So after that whole mess with my brother-in-law, I thought things would calm down. Nope. Last week I was at my mom's place and guess who shows up unannounced? My sister and her husband. My heart sank. I was in the living room and I could hear his booming voice greeting my mom like nothing ever happened. I wanted to lock myself in my room, but I knew that would just cause more drama. They came in and my sister was all smiles, acting like our last fight was just a minor disagreement. But her husband, he had this look in his eyes, like he knew he had the upper hand. He started with his usual jokes, but I wasn't laughing. I felt like a doormat and I was sick of it. Then, out of nowhere, he brings up the wrestling incident in front of my mom, making it sound like a hilarious story. My mom, bless her, she didn't know the whole truth, so she chuckled along. I felt betrayed, humiliated, and just small. I tried to speak up, to tell my side, but they just talked over me. It was like I wasn't even there. But here's where it gets crazy. My mom, she's been seeing someone new, a guy from her book club. He's a retired cop and he's been around a few times. He's nice and I actually like him. He was there that day and he saw how my brother-in-law was treating me. After the story, he pulled me aside and asked if I was okay. I broke down and told him everything. The next thing I know, he's confronting my brother-in-law. It was intense. He told him that his behavior was out of line and that it wouldn't be tolerated. My sister tried to defend her husband, but my mom's boyfriend wasn't having any of it. He made it clear that if my brother-in-law ever laid a hand on me again, he'd personally see to it that there were consequences. My sister and her husband left in a huff and I was left feeling a mix of relief and dread. I knew this wasn't over. And sure enough, a couple of days later, my sister calls me, crying. She tells me her husband has been having an affair. She found texts on his phone and it all came crashing down. I was shocked, but a part of me wasn't surprised. The guy who everyone thought was a saint had a whole other life. My sister was a wreck. She didn't know what to do. She felt like her whole marriage was a lie. I felt bad for her, despite everything. I went over to her place to help her out. We talked for hours, and for the first time in a long time, it felt like she was actually listening to me. But then, as if things couldn't get more twisted, my mom's boyfriend drops another bombshell. 
He's been doing some digging, and it turns out my brother-in-law's volunteering with vulnerable people was a cover for his affair. He was using his charity work as an excuse to meet up with his mistress. The whole community was fooled by this guy. My sister was devastated. She kicked him out, and now she's talking about divorce. It's a mess, but at least now she sees him for who he really is. And me? I'm just trying to support her through this, even though I can't help but feel a little vindicated. Thanks for reading. My sister sleeps with my husband and destroys my marriage. So I marry her ex, and when she comes crawling back pregnant, I slam the door in her face and watch her life unravel. I, a 28-year-old female, have a younger sister named Anne who is 27. Liam, a 28-year-old male, has been my best friend since elementary school. The three of us went to the same college, and during this time, Anne asked me to hook her and Liam up. So I did. And after Anne graduated college, they got married. I was the maid of honor and did everything for her so she wouldn't feel insecure about Liam and I being close. During my time in college, I met Noah and got married after I graduated. He and my sister ended up working at the same company. For three years, everything was going great. My sister and I were pregnant at the same time, so our kids are the same age and do everything together. Two years ago, I wanted to surprise my husband on his birthday. He wanted to just stay home and watch football. I told him I had to work so I could pick up his favorite things. I got home and saw my sister's car. I went in and found them on the couch cheating on me and Liam. I hurriedly took pictures before screaming at them to get out of my house. My sister begged me not to tell Liam, but I already texted him and my husband gave the usual cheating excuses. My parents were extremely mad at her, but didn't want to cut Anne off because of their grandson, which was understandable. Liam and I, of course, filed for divorce, and he was my shoulder to cry on. I guess Noah and Anne got together because they started posting pictures on Instagram. I would have been depressed if it weren't for Liam. And eventually, our relationship turned into something more. During this time, my ex kept texting me saying how sorry he was, and that Anne was a mistake and he hates her. I ignored him, and as soon as our divorces were final, Liam and I went to the courthouse to get married. I posted the ring on Instagram, and my sister showed up immediately at our house crying. She asked how we could do this to her. I explained that if she hadn't ruined both our marriages, then nobody would be in this predicament. She said sorry and broke down even more, and then threw up. So I invited her in and helped clean her off. She couldn't stop saying how much she hates herself and that she hopes Liam and I are happy, but she asked if I can get an annulment so she could try to win her family back. I laughed in her face and said, this is my family now, and if that is her goal, she needs to leave us alone. I told her it's time to leave, and she did. But she keeps sending me texts asking if I can get the annulment. My dad and older brother are on my side, but my mom thinks it was too soon, and that I'm rubbing the marriage in my sister's face. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Sister F.A. Sister F.O. Not the idiot by any stretch of the imagination. ETA for the cherry on top. Work together with Liam to get full-time custody of both your kids. Comment two. This sounds fake, like very fake. I may be wrong, but then again, it's like Schrodinger's experiment. So I just wanna see people's opinions. Now for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been pretty up and down week and I've gotta get this off my chest. Just when I thought things couldn't get messier, they did. Liam and I were settling into our new life, trying to ignore the chaos my sister Anne had caused, but life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. Early Monday morning, I got a call from my parents. They were frantic. My nephew had a high fever and needed to be rushed to the hospital. Anne was out of town for a work conference and Noah was unreachable. I had to make a choice, stay with Liam, who had his own child to worry about, or rush to my nephew's side. Family ties pulled hard, and I found myself speeding to the hospital, leaving Liam to handle our kids alone. At the hospital, the situation was dire. My nephew was diagnosed with meningitis, and the doctors were doing everything they could. I was there, not just as an aunt, but as the closest thing to a mother he had at that moment. The guilt was crushing. I couldn't help but feel responsible for the broken home he was now part of. Days passed and my nephew slowly improved. But the strain on my relationship with Liam was evident. 
He was supportive, but I could tell he was struggling with the burden of caring for our children without me. I was torn between my nephew and my own family. Then, Noah finally showed up. He was a mess full of apologies and excuses. He claimed he'd been on a bender, unable to face what he'd done to our family. I wanted to scream at him, but I had to stay strong for my nephew. Back at home, Liam and I tried to find our rhythm again, but it was clear something had shifted. We were both exhausted, emotionally drained, and our marriage was still so new. We hadn't had the chance to build a solid foundation before being tested by these crises. The final blow came when Anne returned. She was a wreck, blaming herself for everything, including our nephew's illness. She begged for forgiveness, but I was fresh out of sympathy. I told her she needed to sort herself out for her son's sake, but then she dropped a news. She was pregnant, with Noah's child, and she wanted to get back together with him for the sake of their growing family. She pleaded with me to talk to Noah, to convince him to give their relationship another chance. I was furious. How could she ask this of me after everything she'd done? But looking into her eyes, I saw the desperation and fear. She was still my sister, no matter how much she'd hurt me. I talked to Noah against my better judgment. I told him about the pregnancy and Anne's wishes. He was silent for a long time before admitting he still had feelings for her. He wanted to try again, for the baby's sake. Liam overheard our conversation. He was livid. He felt betrayed that I would even consider helping Anne and Noah reconcile. It was the first real fight we'd had, and it was brutal. Accusations were thrown, words that couldn't be taken back. In the end, Noah decided to give it another shot with Anne. They announced their decision to get back together, and the backlash was immediate. My parents were confused, Liam was hurt, and I was caught in the middle, blamed for meddling. Liam and I struggled to move past the argument. The trust we'd built was fractured. We were both too stubborn to admit how deeply the situation had affected us. Our marriage, which had started as a beautiful thing born from shared pain, was now on shaky ground. I had to make a choice. I could fight for my marriage with Liam, knowing it might never be the same, or I could step back and let the chips fall where they may. I chose the latter. It was the hardest decision I've ever made, but I couldn't force Liam to stay in a relationship that had been tainted by so much hurt. Liam moved out last weekend. We're still talking, trying to figure out where to go from here, but it's clear that things have changed. I'm back to square one, dealing with the fallout of my sister's actions and my own choices. It's been a week of hard lessons. I've learned that no matter how much you want to protect your family, you can't control their actions or the consequences that follow. And sometimes, trying to fix things only makes them worse. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.